Friends and neighbors, we are delighted again to spend this time with you and for you allowing us to spend this moment uh, with the master. Um, and we love to just delve into God's word and look and see what God has to speak into our lives. One of my favorite uh, Psalms is Psalms 51. Uh, at first, when I was younger, it wasn't so much my favorite, but as I've gotten older, I've come to really, really appreciate it. It was written by David, a gifted writer, singer, musician, wonderfully gifted. And I encourage you, if you're watching me right now, use your gifts, use them to bless others, use them for the Lord. David wrote this psalm thousands of years ago, but it's still blessing us today. And he wrote Psalms 51, and in it, he described three things. Number one, he described an unforgettable lapse. He had an unforgettable lapse in judgment. David made a mistake, uh, probably the greatest mistake that he made in his walk with God. And you're familiar with the story, how one of his soldiers, Uriah, was off to battle and Uriah's very young wife, who was young enough to be David's daughter, David got caught up in a moment of lust and um, committed adultery with her, um, possibly even against her will. But um, after that, she became with child and became pregnant with David's baby while her husband was fighting. And then David went and tried to use people to have her husband murdered, and he succeeded. And he used soldiers to have her husband killed in battle. And he then married her, and they had a child. Well, God convicted him. But out of that experience, David wrote this. And by the way, David, the Bible said, was a man after God's own heart. And I think this tells us that anybody, any human being can fall. Any person can make a mistake. Any person can. And so he writes about that experience. So he talks about that unforgettable lapse. He says in Psalm 51 and verse three, I know my transgression. He said, my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and I've done what is evil in your sight. So he talks about this unforgettable lapse in judgment. And in fact, he said in verse six, surely you desire truth in the inner parts. David said, for a while I was living a lie because after Uriah was murdered, David married his wife and went for about two years and was going on with his life like nothing had ever happened. So he said, I had an unforgettable lapse. Then the, but the second thing is, David said, but Father, I experienced your unfailing love. Unfailing love. Look what he said in verse one. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing failing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. He said, I had an unforgettable lapse, but Lord, you had unfailing love. You never stopped loving me. Even when I failed, that's what David said, I failed you, but you never failed me. David said, I failed my country. I, I failed Uriah. I failed I failed Bathsheba, his wife. I failed those who trusted me. But Father, you never failed me. So he said, I had an unforgettable lapse in judgment. But Father, I experienced your unfailing love. And then he said, once I received that grace, I had an unbelievable liberation. An unbelievable liberation. Look what he said. Verse 10, creating me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence. Restore to me the joy of your salvation 
and grant me a willing spirit. David said, I experienced an unbelievable liberation of my spirit. Once I realized God had forgiven me and he had given me a second chance, I felt liberated to do what? He said, first of all, I'm liberated to serve. Verse 13 of Psalm 51. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I want to serve you by warning and teaching other people, other young people, not to make the mistake that I made. So he said, I'm liberated to serve. When I was in the bondage of sin, I didn't serve. David never wrote anything while he was in that situation with Bathsheba and uh, Uriah. But he said, now I'm ready to serve. Second thing he said, I'm liberated to sing. Look at verse 14. Save me from my blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. He says, I'm liberated to serve. I'm liberated to sing. And then lastly, he said, I am liberated to offer sacrifices in worship. Look what he said in verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. In your good pleasure, make Zion prosper. He said, Lord, because of your unfailing love, I am now liberated to serve, to sing, and to bless others for your kingdom. God is a good God. Thank you very much.